Praise the Lord. Oh, praise him, sis. Everybody good? We're doing good, thank God. Praise his holy name. Waiting for, the, on, um, waiting for the, the, the saints to gather gather in. Amen. Thank you. Parents from Jamaica. Parents, parents from Jamaica. Yes. Yeah, yeah man. Hey, <laughs> man. Yo, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Add some spice to the service. Yes. Okay, good. Happy Father's Day, Pastor. Happy Father's Day, Pastor. Thank you. Right. Happy Father's Day. 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 Yes. Carol, tell Sister, uh, tell um, Diron Happy Father's Day for us. I will. Okay, we're coming to you uh, today from Puerto Rico. <laughs> yeah. All right, Jamaica. Yeah. <laughs> you got the right station. <laughs> Don't touch that dial. Yeah, I didn't. Three new members on the YouTube. Yeah. All right. Everybody, hey, Faye. Faye is back. Hey, hey, yeah. uh, hey Daniel, you look beautiful. Hey, hey, mom. Hey, Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Faye. <laughs> oh, Chloe, okay, you made it. All right, <laughs> <laughs> who's 718658? That's um, that's um, Elder Rhonda. Oh, hi, Pastor Shackett. Hi, hi Elder Danielle. Rhonda. 
<laughs> God bless you. She doesn't see doing your me. wonderful work with this Zoom. God bless you, Danielle. Oh, Danielle. You're all in my prayers oh, and my thoughts. Andre. Hi, Andre. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hey, hi, Austin. Hi, hi, Chloe. Oh, this yeah. John. Hi, John. Hey, happy Father's Day, John. John, John <laughs> unmute yourself. Hey, happy Father's Day. Yeah. And hi, Leticia. Hey. Leticia. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> All right. Okay, we're well, almost ready, set to go. All right, we're going to get started. Amen. And we're going to ask everybody to mute themselves. We appreciate you. Hey, Sister Letish. Brother Ralph. Praise the Lord. And Sister Stephanie. We're going to get started with our faithful few. I'm sure more will be trickling in. That's all right. Okay, praise and worship. Amen. What? Oh, the Lord is in his holy temple. <laughs> Let, her... <laughs> Let all the earth keep silence before him. Habakkuk 2. Oh, and... All right, now we. Okay. <laughs> oh, my. Thank God my wife sits next to me. <laughs> Jesus. Mom, you got to mute yourself. Yeah. 
Streets of the globe, let me lay my voice. All my cares are past. Home at last, never to rejoice. I'm gonna say it again. Yes, I want to see it. Gonna look upon his face. Let the same forever, Lord, let the Lord of the sea be praised. Oh, Lord, the streets of glory, let me lay my voice. Oh, my cares are past. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. No, I want to know. I want to see my Jesus. My mind made up, and I won't turn back because I want to see my Jesus. All right, amen. Praise God. That's all right. That that gets you going. Nothing like praising the Lord in the morning. God bless. God bless. Yes, indeed. Our scripture lesson this morning is coming from Romans chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. Amen. Therefore, thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art, that judgest. Oh, huh. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judges doest the same things. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judges them which do such things and doest the same, thou shalt escape the judgment of God? But despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering? not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds, to them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality eternal life. But unto them that are contentious, do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation, and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first, and also of the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. For there is no respect of persons with God. Amen. 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 Right now we're going to ask our elder Rhonda if she would lead us out in prayer this morning. Praise the Lord. Oh, glory to God in the highest. Oh, Father God, in Jesus' name. Lord, we worship you. We worship you for this golden opportunity to communicate together, whether it's by the um, computer, Lord, or phone, Lord, you've made this accessible to us. I ask a special blessing on Sister Danielle Stewart as we continue to lift her up for her miracle in her body. 
Oh, Father God, look on all of us. Look on your world. This is your world, oh, Father God. We thank you for the love of Jesus. Oh, Jesus, who shed his blood to wash our sins away, to make us acceptable back to the Father. Lord, you hold this virus in your hand. You hold Trump in your hand. You hold all the leaders of the nations in your hand. We, too, are in your hand. Have your own way, oh, Father God. Bless us today. Pour out your spirit upon us that we may glorify you in the beauty of holiness. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Right now, we're going to um, share our announcements. Um, but before I get started, I would like to just, again, wish all our fathers a happy Father's Day. Pastor John, I believe Pastor Garden High is in the house, and Pastor I'm not sure if Pastor um, Roper is here, but all the fathers um, that I see, don't see, we want to wish you a happy Father's Day. One of our announcements coming up this Tuesday evening at 7 p.m., um, our Bishop Michael Gardenhire and Lady Faye Gardenhire will be celebrating their 17th pastoral anniversary, and Pastor John P. Shekhar Jr. will be the speaker that evening. Um, I will be um, emailing uh, the uh, service information. They are having a virtual service, just like we're having this morning. Those who want, want to join us, I will be sending that out this morning, as well as those who will be joining us by phone. So expect to hear from me with that information. And we're praying that you will join us, help lift up, Again, our Bishop and Lady Faye Garden Hire um, special event occasion. Uh, right now, um, we're going to open up for our testimonies and our scripture reading. Again, I would like to just greet everyone once again um, for allowing us to be together um, during this service. And I would like to open up with my scripture, if you don't mind. I'll be coming from Romans, the 12th chapter, starting at the first verse. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I thank God for the reading of his word this morning. And again, we're asking those who would like to participate in our scripture reading. If I can see you, please can I put a little hand up there. Um, I'm going to call on right now our um, Elder Rhonda to give her testimony or scripture or just her shout out this morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I have a, a quick testimony and one verse of scripture from Revelation 4 and 11. First of all, I want to thank everyone for helping us from all of our uh, fasting and praying. Alan has gone home to be with the Lord, but praise the Lord, he Amen. went home saved. Amen. Saved, Amen. Saved. Amen. And my Amen. scripture this morning is Revelation 4 and 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for that testimony. Yes, I think I met him briefly, Elder Rhonda. Um, and at the time I met him, he wasn't saved. But thank God. That's what it's thank all God. about. Amen. Is, is to live so we can see God face to face um, in peace. And so I thank God for him just accepting Christ when he did. Um, that to God be the glory. Amen. 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 Right now we're going to call our sister Whitley. You're on the line, sister Whitley. I see your number. Right now we're going to move on to our uh, 
trying to sister davis Go right ahead, Sister Davis. Okay. Happy, happy Father's Day to Reverend Shekhar. <laughs> at the cross, at the cross, well, I first saw the light and my burden of my heart roll away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and I, I am happy all the day. Must be the bear, the cross. Alone and all the world goes free. There is a cross for everyone, and there. A cross for me. Amen. 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 God bless Amen. you this morning. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for that. Um, we love you, Sister Davis. We I Thank love you, you all. Thank Everybody. you for your faithfulness. I love you. Thank you for your faithfulness. I see Sister Whitley. Yes, I'm here. Yeah, praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. And praise the Lord to you. Amen. Uh, I have a scripture from Philippians a four, cha uh, chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. It says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. May the Lord add a blessing unto the great word. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Sister Chloe, you can unmute yourself and give us your scripture. Psalm 131. Mm -hmm. Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor my eyes lofty. Now do I, do I exercise myself in great matters, or in things to hide from me? Surely I have behaved and quiet myself as a child that has been of his mother. My soul is even as a mean child. Let us feel hope in the Lord from henceforth and forever. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you, Sister Chloe. Sister Smith, I see you there. Can okay. you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> Am I next? You're next. God bless you. I'm on now. You are now. Go right ahead. <laughs> oh, okay. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still water. He leads me. Oh, one second. Beside the still water. Yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadows of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Uh -huh. And thou prepared the table before me in the presence of my enemy. They anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. That's the 23rd Psalm. Amen. I want, I want to be in the number. Oh, want to be in the number. Oh, I want to be in the number. When the saints go marching in. Oh, after the separation, there'll be tribulation. And I want to be at peace 
around the stone. When I get to heaven, I'm on a seat. My mother is there. She's going to say, here come my child. I know she made it here by prayer. Oh, yeah. And we going to be at home. We going to sing a brand new song. And we going to sing together around the song. I thank God for laying that song on, on my heart. Praise you, Lord. I thank him for having the computer church. <laughs> I enjoy right. that because when right. I get off, I feel like I've been to church, and that That's is so right. nice. I thank uh, Pastor and Lady Shaker for coming up with the idea. <laughs> and I thank God for my church, and I thank God that I'm able to participate in the computer uh, prayer Amen. service. And uh, I ask God to continue to bless me and pray for me. I ask you all to pray for me that I will be the one that is calling for in the last and evil days. That's all all right. right. Smith. Amen. Okay. Thank Amen. you, Sister Bye -bye. Smith. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Um, uh, Brother Austin, you had your hand up. I'm sorry. Yeah, I did. Uh, <laughs> it's a couple verses from Psalm 122, 6 through 8. Uh, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. Amen. For my brethren and companions' sakes, I will now say, Peace be within thee. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you for the scripture. Yes. Pray for the peace of Israel. Amen. I see, um, I see Brother Ralph. Would you like this? Can you unmute yourself, Brother Ralph? We can't hear you. There you go. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm coming from John 1, 12. But as many as receive him to them, he gave the right to become children of God even to those who believe in his name. Amen. And uh, I, I want to thank you for the beautiful card <laughs> in my inbox this morning. <laughs> that was the first thing that popped up. <laughs> <laughs> so it was very nice, very nice. All right. God bless you. Thanks for being with us, Brother Ralph. God yes. bless you. God bless you. Sister Moore. Good morning. Okay. Good morning, Mount Moriah. Happy birthday, Pam. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Okay, I'll be reading the 15th of the Psalm. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle and who shall dwell in thy holy hill? Mm -hmm. He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness, and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is contemned, but he honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that sweareth to his own hurt, and changes not. He that putteth out his money to use you, and not taketh reward against the innocent. He that doeth these things shall never be moved. Amen. 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 God bless you, Sister Moore. Thank you so much. God bless. I see um, um, Sister Judith Parks. Yes. God bless good morning, you. Good everyone. Morning. Good we morning. Wish, we wish all of the fathers a blessed and happy day. Amen. I'm going to read Psalm 118, verse number six. Amen. The Lord is on my side. 
I will not fear. What can man do unto me? Amen. May the Lord bless his word. Amen. 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 That's all right. That's, that's enough right there. He is on my side. What can man do unto me? Amen. God bless you, Aunt Judy, for that. Um, I don't want to miss anybody. If you have something to say, um, if it's okay, um, <coughs> um, Sister Danielle, they can unmute themselves because I, I can't see their faces. But if you have something to say, you can just unmute yourself. And if not, um, oh, go. Oh, oh. Praise the Lord. I can't hear you, Sister Gloria. I can't hear you. Oh, there you go. I'm say to all the fathers and pastors, Shakur. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> God bless y'all. Happy bless Father's you. Day, Junior. Thank you. <laughs> and Amen. tell Jeffrey, um, Happy Father's Day for me, Gloria. Yeah, he's on that back eating. No, oh, okay. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God bless you. But I can say what I want to say, right? John 3 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. Whosoever believeth in him mm -hmm. shall perish and have everlasting life. Amen. 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 Thank God for the word, Junior. Amen. Hang in there. That's something y'all taught me a long time ago. I never forgot that verse. Well. You can't go wrong with that verse. That it sums it all up just in that one verse. Yeah, Amen. I, I learned. I had we had a little place at church, and I learned that verse in my heart. Amen. Kept it in my heart. Amen. We're praying for you. All right. God bless you. You too. Mother Parks, before we move on again, I don't want to cut anybody off. We love you all. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta come mute yourself, um, Mother Parks. You have to unmute yourself. Okay. okay. Can you hear me? Yes. I want to thank the Lord for all the fathers and and the ones that has gone home. We thank them for the memory of how they were honored and how they appreciated things that were done for them. I thank God for my son-in-law and for. <laughs> being good fathers to their children. Thank God for all of those who, who know the Lord. Let we, to, we, we, we got to know how to treat our fathers. <coughs> and our fathers have to learn, know how to treat us. But I just want to read this little verse of a scripture where it says, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. And the Amen. peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are of honest, whatsoever things are just, and whatsoever things are pure, Amen. Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things of a good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Amen. Well, because God is good and his mercy. All the time. And can continue to pray for me. Amen. Amen. Thank you for all of the scriptures. I saw your scripture, Sister Stephanie. Thank you for that. It's, again, it's good to see all the names. I see our new, our Sister Monique. Um, again, our sister Lisa, S sister Molly, we thank everyone for making this service what it is. And we thank God for this time. We're not sure how long we're going to be doing our Zoom, but we thank God for this open door, this avenue um, for us to remain together, to be praying for one another, whether we see them or not. Um, we just thank you. We just thank you. And before we go into our sermon, um, our sister Letitia Jackson has written one of her um, famous poems, um, all written by her. Not, you can't find it on Pinterest. You can't find it. It's coming from her. God has definitely given her a gift of words. Um, and we thank her for sharing her gift with us this morning. And so we're going to 
introduce her, Sister Letitia Jackson. Um, the poem is called A Father. Amen. Amen. God bless everyone. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers, grandfathers. God bless you. A Father. Dictionary say, Dictionaries say a father is a male parent, a man who has begotten a child, a male ancestor, an originator or founder, respect of reverence of position. Miriam Webster acknowledged father as the first person of the Trinity. Amen. Amen. Other names we may use are daddy, dad, old man, papa or pop. <laughs> We have stepfathers, adoptive fathers, and fathers-in-laws. Mm -hmm. Oddly enough, the dictionary also states a male animal or plant yeah. that produces offspring is uh -huh. considered a father. Thankfully, the Bible's definition goes into deeper depth of what a father should be. It says, a father is one who will train up a child in the way they should go whether he or she. The father, not the schools or the government. All right. A father should teach God's word to prevent arrest and imprisonment. Second Corinthians 3, 2 Corinthians 3, 2-3 says a father needs to exemplify a good life because children read what we do. So be mindful of how you treat your wives. First Timothy 5 and 8 states the father should provide for his family not just monetarily in clothes and cable TVs, Amen. but with physical support, hugs, high fives, firm handshakes, and kisses. Let's not forget emotional support. Stop. Take time to talk and listen. These are often big misses. That's true. Ephesians 6 and 4 reads, you fathers provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, mm -hmm. which will guide them to stay on the right path. Yell less, listen more, teach them God's ways, love, comfort, and encourage more. They'll then listen to more of what you say. True. Proverbs 13, 24, spare the rod and spoil the child, is often misconstrued. It has been used to abuse instead of teaching of what not to do. Amen. Luke 15, 20 through 24 is the story of the prodigal son. No, he was not the only son, but it teaches us to forgive our children and to <laughs> not give up on them when they steer away from Christ, the chosen one. The Bible is the best example to learn how to be a father. <clears throat> Excuse me. It shares of what we should and should not do, Amen. how to love God and support, nurture one another. And for all who have stepped up to the plate to bring forth life, may God bless you and keep Amen. you all. May you be guided by the love of Christ to keep you, your children, and your children's children. God bless and happy Father's Day. Amen, 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 amen. Beautiful, beautiful. I don't know what to say. God is awesome. And I thank you once again for sharing your gift with us, your words of wisdom. And God bless you, Sister Letitia. Thank you so much. Amen. Thank you very, very much. Right now we're going to go into our sermon brought on by our own pastor john p sheckett we thank you amen amen good morning once again walk like a man it's a sermon for us today scripture lessons come from proverbs one <clears throat> excuse me one through eight three one through 23 amen I would like to read one of the Proverbs first. You don't need to turn to this one, but before I read the first one, it's Proverbs 17 and 6. Children's children are the crown of old men, and the glory of children are their fathers. It's wonderful to be a father. I 
ask the Lord when I did not know my wife. I asked the Lord, I would like to have three children. I would like to have two boys and a girl. And I would like to have two boys and a girl. Two boys would grow up mm, so that they can take care of their sister. Um, just talking to the Lord one day, you know, uh, you can ask the Lord for anything. You know, uh, whether you get it or not, it's still up to God, but you can ask him for anything. And so I just went on. I mean, you know, you just go on with life. It's not like you're going to sit there and wait for an answer. You just I think I was just walking down the street when I was talking to God. And well, lo and behold, that's what God blessed me to have. First, he had to bless me with a wife. And, <laughs> and then um, he blessed us with uh, two boys and a girl, really five children, but three survived. Uh, and we thank God, and I know I thank God from the bottom of my heart for what he has blessed our household to be. Every time I think about our children, I think about moments of what we, as parents, because now they're grown or continuing to grow, but you know, you think of them when they were, could do anything for themselves, you know, they were tiny. I remember Andre uh, in the hospital room when Jackie was passed out for nine hours of labor and I was holding him in my arms and he was uh, like a red tomato and I would I'd pinch his cheek and he'd be just looking at me and uh, I'm talking to him in my mind. And he's, you know, I know he was saying, what are you doing? You know, <clears throat> you know, you just remember things like that. I never got out of my leather jacket that I came to the hospital with. I sat in that chair all night long in the same jacket. I remember Austin, when he was delivered, they put him on the table and I looked over there and I saw Austin and I said, my goodness, this kid is huge. <laughs> I said, I mean, he, he's, got, he's got a chest already, muscles. I mean, this guy's <laughs> gonna be a weightlifter. It, just things that you remember, you know? And, and, and with Chloe, I, I looked at Chloe and I said, well, you know, she, she's like a flea. She's this little tiny light feather. And um, I think on those things and thank God each day from that moment to this, as being a father, because I always wanted to be one. And God has blessed me with just that. And being a father, <clears throat> I wanted to touch base with uh, some scripture from the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter one, um, starting with uh, verse two. And it reads like this, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. Because as a father, uh, hopefully you have some of this already because you have to bestow this upon your children. If you don't have this already, you're in trouble. To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice and judgment and equity. To give subtly to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. And I remember growing up, Unfortunately, in my household as a child growing up, my dad was physically there, but he was not there to uh, be a real dad to me. But the word of God tells us when your father and mother forsake you, the Lord will take you up. And so it is. Um, my mother became the mother and the father. So she instructed me on mannerisms. She instructed me on how to uh, take care of, do you want to say being a man? Um, being gracious when it comes to the opposite sex. In other words, open the door uh, for a woman to walk on the outside when you walk down the street. I asked my mother, I said, well, what, what is walking on the outside? What is that all about? She said, well, if a car comes in onto the sidewalk, it's going to hit you first before it hits her. And I said, oh, really? <laughs> I said, so, but it's all about being gracious, about being a man about being taking the hit for the woman. And so my mother would teach me, you know, just 
these you know simple things of mannerisms, how to be kind and gentle and nice. And the thing about it is, when I came, when I got out there in the world, I thought everybody was like what my mother taught me to be. And I quickly found out that that's not the case. There are a lot of folks out there, if not most people out there, are pretty rough, pretty hardcore, pretty much on an edge. And so I had to learn another thing about being a man, not only being peaceful and loving, but also you have to have a certain kind of edge on you as well in order to deal with society, unfortunately, as it is. So that also you have to teach your children. Don't trust everybody. Unfortunately, can't trust everybody, can't believe everybody. And so Solomon goes on to say, a wise man will hear and will increase learning. A man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. In other words, you'll listen to wise counsel. Solomon teaching uh, his son, teaching us through the scriptures, in order for us to get through this life that we're in down here, the best way to do it, because God gave him this ability when he asked God for help in the beginning of his uh, reign, he asked God to uh, help him to be able to rule these people, his people, God's people. And so Solomon um, asked God for the wisdom and, and understanding to be able to do this. And God said, you know, you ask a good thing, Solomon. You didn't ask for long life. You didn't ask for the life of your enemies. You didn't ask to be rich, even though you're a king. You didn't ask for more riches. You asked for wisdom and understanding. Mm -hmm. And so God blessed him with what he asked for. He gave him more wisdom and understanding than anyone that was on the earth at that time. Then God said to him, I'm going to give you even what you didn't ask for. See, when your prayer pleases God, he'll add to the prayer. He'll give you more than you ask for. It is the same thing like giving, just giving. You give $100, God says to you, okay, you give $100, i will give you 1000 And we wonder, what? But that's how God is. I mean, his love goes beyond what you do to show his love to us. And that's why God has just put it into me my soul, and talking to God. You know, you can talk to God any time, right? Uh, there's plenty of time where you don't have stuff going on where you're thinking about work or whatever. There's plenty of time where you could just talk to God. And God put it into my heart and mind, um, not just looking at it on TV, because I've seen this plenty of times. You know, the homeless situation. People, you know, when you drive a car, when you come to the red light, you know, they're coming up to the car looking for money and so forth. And, I, and for the longest time, I was <clears throat> uh, always say to myself, well, what are they going to do with it? You know, <clears throat> they're going to buy liquor. They're going to buy cigarettes. They're going to do wrong with the money. <clears throat> so God let me know, it's not up to you what they do with it. As long as you do the right thing by giving it the right way. You don't give it with conditions. You give it because of the love you have from my, what my word has put into you. And he or she will have to give an account what they do with it. I said, hmm. Now, I have been doing this for like forever, right? I mean, we've been seeing and passing people forever, making a judgment on them as to what they're going to do with this money. And so God has released me from that because I wanted to be released from it. I said, Lord, you know, these people need help. What can I do? They give it to them. So I have in my car devoted the, the middle part. Whenever I get money, I put it, I just put, I put it in there, loose money, like dollars, $5, $10 in there. And when I come to a red light and I see somebody, you know, they have to sign the cardboard sign, you've seen them, walking down, looking for money, I go into that. And I take some money out, roll down the window, and just give it to them. And it's up to them what they do with it. Now, the next thing I need to do, remember to do, is I need to remember to attach a track to it. See, giving money is fine. They're getting the 
necessary thing to feed themselves, but now they need some spiritual food. What they do with the track also is up to them. If they throw it to the ground, they will have to answer for it. If they take the money and buy liquor, they'll have to answer for it. That's not up to you. That's up to God. I mean, uh, that's up to them, okay, what they do with it. So, you know, if you talk to God as you talk to your children, he will release you from some things that have kept you from being blessed. Because the reality is how you're being blessed is how you treat others, right? Uh, we put limitations on our blessing because we feel uh, or make a judgment on what they're going to do with it, how they're going to use it, and all the rest of this stuff. When God said, just, just give it. If God mentioned to you, I want you to take what you have in your bank account. You are unemployed. You are in COVID-19, unemployed because of it. I want you to go to your savings account, and I want you to take the last bit of money out there, and I need you to give it to so-and-so. You know what we're going to do with that, right? We're going to say, I didn't hear God say a thing to me. That's what we're going to do. But if you want to get blessed, you follow God's word because you see how you get blessed is following God's word. Not coming, with, coming up with a reason not to do, but come up with what to do. And so it's up to us, church, as we, uh, as fathers to, today that, Father's Day, this is our special day, just like Mother's Day is a special day. But that doesn't stop us from being fathers tomorrow. So we have to still do the same thing, right? We still have to instruct with wisdom and understanding our sons and our daughters in the way that they should go. Not to play favorites, not to love one child more than another child. To give them understanding as you know it to be. If you don't know it, then you ask God for it. Because the bottom line, church, is when a child gets to be a certain age, they have to give an account for what they are going to do with that instruction that you have given them down through the years. You cannot force down the throat of any child the way that they should go. It's still going to have to be up to them when they get old enough. But as long as they're under your roof, they have to obey the rules of the house. Once they get on their own, they now have to give an account to God for everything that they do. And a lot of times, unfortunately, <clears throat> some slips, some slide, <clears throat> excuse me, but that doesn't mean that we give up on our children. That means that we continue to pray for them. As soon as you have a child, you're going to be praying until you leave here. You're going to be praying every day for your child, not just to get it right, but to keep it right to keep them in the understanding that God has blessed you to come into. Mm -hmm. This understanding that God has me in right now, it took me years to get this. I mean, I made lots of mistakes. And so same thing with your children. You just want your children to make less mistakes than you did by the wisdom and understanding that you have gained through your walk with God. Mm -hmm. And so as Solomon is telling his son, to understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings, because they are. The fear of the Lord. Is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother for they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head and chains about thy neck they will be a, a wonder for you if you follow them if you not just listen but do a lot of people listen but then they don't do they'll uh-huh you to death or I know but it's okay to know but now you, you need to do. And so once again, we're not perfect. Parents are not perfect. Fathers definitely are not perfect. Uh, but I remember what Jesus said about um, his father. He said, I can do nothing except what the father shows me. Uh, 
And so once again, he's trying to let us know to be obedient to that head that's over you. Jesus could have easily said, wait a second, wait a second, Father. I mean, I'm God too. I mean, you know, I have the ability to be able to do thus and so. And Jesus understood, no, I don't. The only ability I have is what the Father gives me. And so it is with the natural fathers on the earth. If the sons would recognize it. My father told me that it wouldn't be a good idea for me to hang out with such and such a person or people. But yet you hear all of these voices on the, the sides and they convince you to come and run with them. And that's only going to be to your hurt. That's not using wisdom. That's not using the understanding that God has blessed you to be able to hear from your father. The second scripture that I like to touch base with you with, still in Proverbs, is in Proverbs chapter 3, and we're going to read from verses 1 through 23. The first part of Proverbs has a lot, Proverbs has a lot to do with the father-son conversation. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments, my sayings. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Uh, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. This is the father talking to his son, telling him what he should do. And if you do these things, so shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Because if you're going to find goodness in the sight of God, you will surely find it in the sight of man. They won't have an answer to be able to tell you why you're doing what you're doing is, or say that you're, what you're doing is wrong. They won't know how to answer you, just like they didn't know how to answer Jesus. Why do you do these things? Who, who gave you uh, the authority to do these things? And they, they have no answer for what and why Jesus was doing these things, but he's doing because of what the Father told him to do. So as long as you obey the Father, the world don't have an answer for what you're doing. But it's right. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. That's why we, that's why we say talk to Jesus every day. Talk to God every day. When you have nothing to do, talk to Jesus. When you're doing something, talk to Jesus. Sing songs to him. Praise him in your heart and in your mind. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of dead time in our life, in our thinking. If we stop thinking about the things of the world and just think about the things that pleases God, and that's praise. You, you know, if we would just understand something, it doesn't take much to cause God's heart to rejoice in you. It just takes praising him. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't ask for much. If you just praise him, sing songs of praise to God. It rejoices his heart. It, I mean, there is nothing he won't throw in your direction of goodness and mercy. I mean, just like he did with Solomon, he'll do it to you also. I'll give you what you didn't even ask for because you pleased him so. And that pleasing comes about just thanking him for being God. Thanking him for saving your soul. Thanking him for opening up your eyes one day that you could see, your ears to hear, and then your heart to receive his word into your life. Mm -hmm. Do you not know how big a deal that is? That is like, wow, in the sight of God. Man doesn't think much of stuff like that. But for God, those are big because there is so much in us 
That's that sinful nature that keeps us away from doing these things, walking with God, praising God. As Job, as God spoke to the devil about Job, he's a man that runs away from evil. He escheweth evil. He shuns wickedness. He doesn't have anything to do with, doesn't want to have anything to do with anything that's wrong. And that's what pleases God. When he sees in you the desire to want to do right all the time, not just some of the time, all the time, he can point you out and say, boy, you know, see my servant. Even though you want me to release you to do something to him, my servant loves me even though this world that he lives in or she lives in is out to try to destroy that soul. They are still trusting me for salvation. Everything is not going right in their life, but they still praise me. They still love me. They're still committed to me. Because unfortunately, in this world, we will have tribulation, which through it all, there's that song, through it all, I, ah, ah. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Mm -hmm. But it's through going through all of the things of this world that are not right. It's a learning process, church. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we get it right, sometimes we don't, but it's a learning process. If you hold fast to God's word, he will deliver you every time, every time. So here's a father teaching his son about loving God, fearing God, looking to God and trusting God, and in all thy ways acknowledge him. Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Mm -hmm. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. What does God ask for? Does he ask for everything that you earn? No. He asks for 10%. 10%. Can you give 10% to me? What does God do with that 10%? He multiplies it back to you, gives you 100%. He gives you the job to earn the 10% that he's asking for. He gives you the increase, the bonus, the raise of the 10% he has asked for. The, the, the cup, your cup continues to get full. You do for God, he continues to fill your cup. The cup continues to run over. You don't know how it's going to happen. You didn't put in for a, a bonus. You didn't put in for a raise. You didn't put in for a job transfer. You didn't put in for this, that, or the other thing. But God is the one who opens up the door, touches the hearts of men. You didn't ask for that envelope to be dropped on your desk or for something to come in the mail. But God made the way for these things to happen because of 10%. 10%. It's just following God's word. And the instruction from the father to the son is basically just telling him, if you do these things, happy are you if you do them. So for the fathers today, I want to congratulate you once again. I want to thank God for me being a father. I thank God for the time that he's blessed me with my sons and my daughter. Right now, my daughter and I go bicycle riding. That's right, bicycle riding around the neighborhood. That's right, me on a bicycle. I know you need to take a picture of that, right? Uh, and of course, she doesn't want me to ride with her. She rides ahead of me. So I just let her go, you know. She's got to be independent, you know, so you go. But I, I do my loops around the neighborhood. Now, th when I say neighborhood, you know, we're in a, a development that's closed off. So... Riding is not like riding on the street with cars going 50 miles an hour. So it's a pretty uh, easy like loop in the neighborhood going around and around and around. All right, so I ride the bike with her. I, I take her down to see the swans at the lake. 
we feed the swans, we get the unsalted crackers and we throw the crackers in there so the swans can come over. Uh, it, see, these are memories. These are memories. These, you know, don't take, uh, I, I remember talking to God also. I said, Lord, before I had children, I, I want to be able to do with my children what I was not, what I didn't get. Yeah, and that, that connection. And, and so for my daughter, I, I do that. Now for my sons, I remember throwing the football in the front yard, uh, throwing the baseball uh, to see whether or not they would be interested in baseball. Yeah. Andre got to high school and he, and he tried out for the high school baseball team. The pitcher hit him one time. He said, that's it for me. <laughs> Uh, but, you, you know, you, you, you do these things <laughs> to, to try, to try. Um, he joined the track team. And what I wanted to do, and, and he, he joined it to run cross country. Of course, I can't be there for cross country because that's in the hills someplace. But during, I think, uh, summertime, they, they, um, it's track, track and field. So I wanted to get down to the high school to see him run because, you see, you might not realize it because you're no longer the kid, you're the parent, that you, your child inside would love to see you on the sideline, you know, seeing them compete. Whether they're in last place or first place, that's not the issue. It's the just mere fact that you're there watching them compete. And so I was able to do that. Freezing cold, <laughs> standing out there, freezing, waiting for him to run. He was freezing because he had the week to be called to run. But, you know, you look back on it and say, oh, my goodness, how did I get over, right? But that's being a father, wanting to participate with your children in things. And that other thing is like um, with my son Austin throwing that baseball, hitting that baseball. Um, he never really wanted to try to join a baseball team, but he just loved to hit the baseball. Okay, so we played catch, we played baseball. Wasn't interested in football, but we did the football, you know, with ourselves. And the other thing with band, Andre gets the horn, Austin, sings. yeah, Austin sings in the Glee Club. So, <laughs> what does that mean? As a parent, you're in the audience on every occasion. You are there to hear the band play, the Glee Club sing, uh, and that's being a parent. Uh, and I look back now, now that it's over, I say, well, thank you, Jesus, praise the Lord. And believe it or not, in the last year, uh, next to last year of her time in high school, Chloe joined the basketball team. And I was, well, we really were able to go and see her play a couple of games um, of basketball because we asked her if she wanted to, um, you know, do something like that. They were doing something special at her high school. And uh, she said yes, believe it or not. <laughs> she said yes. I go, why did she say yes? Because now you have to go to the games. Okay, so we went, we went to all of the games and so forth. But all, of the, all of what I'm trying to say is this. Being a dad, being a parent is like, it's fulfilling in seeing your children grow in the things they love to do. And it gives you, when you look back on it, uh, at least a fulfillment with inside of yourself to say, well, thank you, Lord. I, I was able to, to do this with them. And it was a pleasure through it all, thick and thin. I thank God for my children, just like you thank God for your children. All of us have children and for the fathers that don't have children, well, the young men that are here, uh, give it time. You, believe me, give it time. Because when you start having children, your life is over. Listen to me, your life is over. It is never in the same. Way. Yes, in a good way. Thank you, my wife chimes in, it's a good way, yes. Um, but it's over. I mean, you know, because now your, your time is devoted not, not just to you and your wife having a good time together, now you have this little one, this bundle of joy. Okay, so anyway, all of this as we 
as I come to my conclusion, I'm getting long in the tooth now. Uh, I thank God to no end because I'm hoping that in my walking like a man, I help my sons to walk like a man in what they have learned. <laughs> when they do have a family, they'll know how to teach their sons or their daughter in the way that they should go. God bless your souls. Right now we're going to pray. And as, as we pray, I want to lift up a special prayer. First of all, to our, for our deacon of Sproul, she was unable to join us this morning. She said her sister-in-law passed away. Um, her sister-in-law lives in Washington, the state of Washington. Uh, I failed to ask her, I failed to ask her uh, if she was going, but uh, since she wasn't going to be able to join us this morning, she might be on her way. So we want to remember Deacon Spool in her family in the passing of her sister-in-law. Amen. As well as we go down the list this morning while President Trump still because of what we've been hearing this coronavirus is not going away. It has not gone away. Don't be fooled with thinking we can read and I'll get into whether or not we're coming when we're coming back after we Let's give the prayer list. The hospital workers, the missionaries, the sick and the shut-in, those who are depressed and alone, those in nursing homes, the homeless, the unsaved, the backslider, families, single parents, pastors, churches, prayer warriors, intercessors, the Mountain Riot Church family, and I've mentioned about Deacon Sproul. Would also like to mention about those that are graduating, the young people. Pray for them because things are so uh, tenuous right now as to what, what next step to take. Um, school leadership, um, those that have to be in the front lines of the pandemic through the cleaning of all of these places a, a safety for protesters. Um, no, I don't know how much long is they're going to be out there, but you know, when you have that closeness, anything is subject to happen. Uh, strength for the saints that are fasting, praying, the intercessors, definitely. All the bereaved of all those that have passed on, including us with our elder hunt, uh, church leaders and their families. Uh, the I said the homeless. The jobless and the unsaved. It's, it's faded. And uh, lastly, um, the leaders and lawmakers of our country. No doubt they need prayer like, like no other. Amen. Because it seems like, once again, with this rise, not in the pandemic, but in the reason why there are protests, is with continuing to leave God out of it. And this is only going to work if we include God in working things out with this. Um, uh, not, not, not the um, protest, but the reason for the protest. Unless we get God involved in prayer, fasting as well, to turn the hearts of men, all man is going to do is put a Band-Aid on it. And we're going to be revisiting the situation again. If we don't learn from history, we will be destined to repeat it. And how many times have we heard this before? So, and that's because we've left God out. But man continues to do the same thing. So once again, in my closing prayer, remember all of those that I listed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Let's do it. Lift your hands in this atmosphere and say, I am grateful. I am grateful for the things that you have done. You look at him and tell him, yes, I'm grateful for the victories that we've won. Tell him, I could go on and on. About your works. Because I'm grateful. To praise you, Lord. Lift your hands and say, flowing from my heart.
Amen, amen, amen. So much to be grateful for, yeah. for life, for salvation, for God seeing something in us, as our pastor John often says, worth saving. God is so good. He deserves all our praise and worship. And we thank you once again for all our friends, our guests, our families, our members of Mount Moriah for making this service what it is. And happy Father's Day again to all in the house. Thank you so very much. Continue to be blessed today and have a blessed week. We look forward to seeing you next week, God willing. And again, don't forget Tuesday evening service i will be reaching out to those um to join us there as well a pastor bishop garden hire and later garden hire service thank you once again be blessed if you want to stay a little bit after service just to say hey you can we love you and be encouraged church amen. love you guys amen <laughs> uh, i saw you junior you were having a good time there that's all right praise them Look at me. <laughs> you know, let me tell you something. This is, um, yeah, you know, this is the first problem that I ever had. It's been the best one I ever had in my life. I've never got any problem. Amen. Amen. I've, well, thank God for being alive to be able to see another uh, another Father's yeah. Day, Junior. Happy on what to do. I don't know what to do. Amen. Amen. Good to see everybody. Thank you guys for coming. I see our new. Thank you, Monique. It's good to see your beautiful face again, Monique. Hi guys. Hey. Um, thank you, Letitia. You can unmute yourself. Yeah. Um, we just love you guys, Hi, Sister you know, Carolyn. Hi, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Sister Carolyn. Love all of y'all. Oh. Uh, oh, your face. Really. Yeah, it really, truly, Carolyn, so true. Look forward to seeing your face. Yeah, again. amen. Yeah. Can't take that for granted. You really can't take that for granted to see everybody's faces. We don't know. They're all the, they're all the faces that I can see. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Some people hiding yeah. their face. I know. I don't know what's going on here. I Put that wig on. Around. Some people moving around and get up. So they true, <laughs> true, 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 true. Yeah, I, I did. Just Leticia. <laughs> here you go. For those that are still here, that are Mount Moriah members, we're looking at perhaps the third Sunday in in July of coming back into the house. Maybe. Yeah, it's a maybe. I'm just throwing it out there. That might happen. I'll keep everybody informed if it is still to happen. On top of that. We are still going to maintain the Zoom service once a month. At least. At, at least once a month. Yeah. So that yeah, we can yeah. continue to stay hey. connected to those in the Outer Banks. Go ahead, Outer Banks. The North Carolinas. The Georgias. <laughs> you guys have to call me at least. Oh. Yeah. Well, Personal phone will. calls for service. What would you say, Anu? Personal phone calls for service. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Letitia. <laughs> <I'm sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we want to stay in touch with everybody that's out of the state. Yeah, definitely. So uh, we will continue at least at least once a month. At least, uh, at least. Who knows? It might be more than that. Yeah. At Everything least. is a work in progress. Yeah. We're gonna see if we can set something up. I don't know if we can do streaming, do the FaceTime, whatever. To you know, to still okay, stay connected to. Um, you know, our friends, our family. Right, um, near so, and far. Well, we'll definitely have mm -hmm. to talk about that. And we want to thank you again and again, Sister D, yes. for just, mm -hmm. you know. Allowing this to yeah. be. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, she's handled yeah. all of the graphics, all of the different things that you see in the yeah. course of Danielle. I, 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 I was the DJ, so I was a response. I was responsible for the music. <laughs> Or, uh, yeah, she she uh, really she brought us in. Yeah, she, yeah, she brought us yeah. in. Thank she, you so much. Yeah, yeah. She kept Mount Mariah alive. Amen. 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 We th and thank you, Sister Letitia. Here, you had your yeah. opportunity yeah. to share your gifts. Yeah. See, That's right. <laughs> beautiful for everybody to see, for everybody to hear. Right. I just said, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. and yeah. we love every one of you guys. It would not be the same without seeing. So you guys participated. That's right. And Anu, what are you? What are you in a car? Yeah, we're on a car. We're gonna get pick up Skylar. 
Yeah. Oh. As long as you're not driving. <laughs> All right, peace. Peace out. Bye, guys. Bye. Okay, hey. All right, bye bye. All right, God bless you all, guys. See you later, right. alligators. Okay. Bye, That's Junior. Right. Hang in there. I'm Letty. We'll see you at yeah. four. We'll see you at four, right? Bye, yes, Sister Smith. Yes, yes. Bye, Sister Lisa. Bye, right. Glo. How was your week, Glo? Great. Okay, great. good. After a while, crack a down. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Bye, Brother Ralph. <laughs> Bye, Brother Ralph. <laughs> love you guys. Love all of you. Hey, Ralph. Yeah, love you, girl. Mm -hmm. Bye. 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 <laughs> all right, we'll see you later, um, Dan. Yeah. All right, we'll Andre, we'll see you later. I like your backdrop. What's that in the back? What's in the background? Andre, what's that hanging? There's a flag. No, you're in the back. Oh, oh, there's a flag? Yeah, this part. I'm in my new place now. Yeah, no. Well, let us take let us take, take a look at your surroundings. Yeah, show your place. <laughs> show your place. <laughs> show my yeah. place. I mean, can I even yeah. do this? Hold on. Give it show show All your right. place. <laughs> okay. Wait, where you going? Okay, there we go. Oh, oh you got a fan? I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a little messed up. I just woke up not too long ago. Oh, okay. That's all right. That's all right. That's the kitchen. Uh-huh. I can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. the bathroom? That's a bathroom. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Wash and dryer. Uh huh. <laughs> Junior. <laughs> He's got a couch. She's got a couch. Danielle. <laughs> Man, that's pretty much it. It's a really small space, but that's you know, all right. That's all right. It's good. Uh, that looks yeah. good. I'm happy it's for you, man. Let me put my thumbs up. Yeah. Thumbs up. Yeah, yeah. thumbs up. <laughs> Gloria. Happy oh. inspection. Happy inspection. Oh. Well, we gonna let you guys go. We got another. Hey guys, um, I love y'all so much. We love you. Love we love you, Glow. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye, Molly. Bye, everybody. Brother Thank Ralph. You, Happy Father's Day, Brother Ralph. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Mom. Bye. See y'all later. Okay. At, at, at four o'clock. Four o'clock. I'll see you later, Aunt Judy. She's gone? No, she's there. She's muted. <laughs> All right, Dan, I'm going to let you go. Thanks, girl. <laughs>